Morning and welcome back to another video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to draft the shawl lapel and collar. The lapel is defined as a part on each side of a coat or jacket immediately below the collar, which is folded back on either side of the front opening. There are three main types of lapel and collar the notch lapel and collar the peak lapel and collar and the shawl lapel and collar which is the one we're concentrating on in this tutorial the notch lapel is defined by a notch where the bottom of the collar and the top of the lapel connects at a 75 to 90 degree angle the notch lapel always point outward and is partitioned from the top collar. The notch lapel is the most common type of all the three lapels. For this reason, they are considered the least formal of all the three types of lapel. They are common in your everyday work suits, jackets, and coats. The peak lapel is defined by edges pointing towards your shoulders. Peak lapels always point upward and are partitioned from the top collar. Of the three types of lapel, peak collars are considered to be the most formal and most traditional. The shell lapel is defined as a continuous curve without breaks or points such as the notched or peaked lapels. A shell lapel is a solid rounded piece of fabric that wraps all the way around. However, this fabric that forms the shawl lapel often comes in a satin fabric. Because the shawl lapel is a continuous curve and is often made from a satin fabric, for these two reasons, the shawl lapel are considered the most relaxed and elegant of all the three lapel types. Each lapel has what is called a lapel roll and the lapel roll is the fall and curl of the lapel from the break of the collar to the first button. There are three standard types of lapel width. The slim width which measures from two and a quarter inches to two and three quarter inches. The regular width which measures three inches to three and a half inches and the wide width which measures from three and three quarter inches to four and a half inches. However, all the standard width are based on personal preference. You can make your lapel as slim or as wide as you want it to be. Start by tracing out your back and front sloper from your basic bodice pattern. Because you're going to be altering the design on your back and front bodice, it's always best to trace out a copy so that you can have your original basic bodies intact and safe to use later for other designs. When tracing out your front sloper, leave enough space at the center front and at the neck area. You will need that space at the center front of the sloper to draft the lapel and the space at the neck area to draft the collar. From the center front of your sloper at the hem, mark and square out a 1 inch extension. Then from that point, draw an extended vertical line to the neck point at center front. Next, extend the waistline to the 1 inch extension. Then from that point at the extension, measure up 1 inch. That point would be our break point. The break point is where your lapel roll ends 
and just below the break point is your button placement. Your button could be exactly at the waist or one inch up from the waist where the break point is. I decided for my button to be exactly on the same level as the break point. Next, draw a line from the break point to the neck point at shoulder and extend that line past the neck point. That extended line is not based on any measurements for now. To determine the measurement for the extended line at the neck and shoulder, we are going to measure the back neck length and we are going to apply that measurement to the extended line at the neck at shoulder. Measure from one end of the back neck to the other end of the back neck and record that measurement. My back neck length measures three and 10 over 16 inches or three and five eight inches. So from the neck point, measure your back length along the extended line. Then from that point, measure backward half an inch. Next, find the midpoint or halfway mark of your back neck measurement. You could calculate the midpoint or use your tape measure to measure the length and then fold the measuring tape in two to get the midpoint of your back neck length. Using your curved ruler, draw a curve that blends back into the neckline making sure it touches that midpoint mark. Next, extend the half an inch point out towards the center front at a 90 degree angle. That line will represent the back collar line. For now, that line is not based on any measurements just make sure it extends past the one inch extended vertical line at the center front of the sloper. Later, we will determine the measurement of that line. To determine the length of that line, from the end of the back neck point, measure out the length of the back neck. Or use an L roller to connect the neck at center front at the one inch extended line to the line like so to complete the drafting of the collar. Use whichever method or measurement you're more comfortable with. To simplify the drafting process, I'm just going to use my back neck length measurement. From the end of the back neck point, which is indicated by where I'm pointing my pencil, measure the back neck length along the collar line. Then draw a straight line that connects that point to the neck point at the one inch extended line. Next, using a curved ruler, draw a curved line from the extended neck point to the break point to create the lapel. Before the final step, I'm just gonna use my marker to highlight the lapel and color.
Finally, add the half an inch seam allowance all around your front sloper to make it into a pattern. Make sure you add the half an inch seam allowance to your back sloper as well. Pay attention to how I'm adding the half an inch seam allowance to the shawl lapel sloper because it is different from how the half an inch seam allowance is added to the peak and notch lapel which will be what my subsequent tutorials would be about respectively. Okay everyone, we've come to the end of this tutorial. If I have made the concept of drafting a shawl collar a little bit easier to understand and helped further your fashion designing experience, please subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, share and leave your comment down below. Until my next video, bye and good luck.